It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Better the Hunt, Easy Cut, Packer Max, Buck Bates, Limb Walker Game Calls, Total Peep, Sunrise Archery, Scent Lock, Scent Blocker, and Rebel Six Rubs and Seasons. Welcome back to another episode of the Upmark Journal Podcast, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in the cabins tonight, waiting for the big storm to hit. And it's not a Sunday night. No, it's Thursday. And it's usually on a Sunday night we get the storm, and I get to drive home in it. But it, now we switched it to Thursday. So everybody can thank us for just moving the th- snowstorms to Thursday night. Just, yeah, I think it's Jim Beasley once again messing with us. Oh, absolutely. He's sitting up there in the big sky right now. You know, it, it, it always happened when we go shoot archery league. It always started. So Right. We start archery league this week. <laughs> That's right. So why not? Let's I just guess throw I better, a winter snowstorm at us. I guess we better find, I better find my bow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Right. Well, let's take care of some quick business and get this thing rolling tonight, man. We got a guest Absolutely. sitting here. We got a guest sitting there, and he wants to get. He's chomping at the bit to get on Facebook. Obviously, so <laughs> we'll uh, actually we're gonna take care of business. And you know what, guys? It's cold, but we got some nice warm Hunters Blend coffee. And if you use the promo code UNJ, you can get your discount when you check out at huntersblendcoffee.com. dot com. That's right. It's right under my finger for those of you That's watching right. the show, or for those that are uh, listening on the lot on the podcast. Capital U and J. There you go. So, but that's not all. Uh, our friends down at Buck Bates, aka Deer Camp, as well. Uh, if you use the promo code Up North Journal, you can get twenty percent off your order when you check out there at BuckBates.com. Get over there and check out what he's got lined up. Uh, he's got some stuff there for uh, for your hunting seasons, you know. And it's never too late to start thinking about hunting season. Nope. Especially with spring coming up, so there's nothing better to do than do some spring planning, I think. Absolutely. What do you think we just get right into it, then? I think we get we get Link and Roan on here to talk about the Packer Max and doing and thinking spring. <laughs> What's going on, Link? Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, hanging in there, man. Hanging in there, living the dream. Sometimes it's a nightmare. Yeah, right so, on. <laughs> and Lincoln, right. you are on the west side of the state. And you're going to get hammered with snow. And you're se- getting hammered with and snow. And you're sending it our way, so... Yep. You know what? Let's just sit tight. Let's talk some. Let's talk some spring. And how you been? I've been. Uh, I've been good. Been busy. Um, it's just been. Uh, it's kind of been a whirlwind since. Uh, really, since September of last year, uh, between wrapping up, you know, the, the Packer Max selling season to hunting, and then you know, through the holidays, and then right into uh, Packer Max full steam ahead. Right after, you know, basically since. Um, thanksgiving it hasn't it hasn't let up and uh so it's just been crazy and then we're throwing in a little bit of uh real estate here and there and uh haven't been haven't been had time to do much of anything besides that so well let's start off with uh, let's start off yeah absolutely it sounds like you've been busy but let's start off with some fun stuff in in your hunting you you started off hunting in michigan how did that go for you um so it was a, it was a, we, we saw, in, we, so we're, we hunt, uh, our properties in the northwest corner of Nuago County, and uh, it was, it was a, a pretty trying year. Um, you know, the, they have enacted the, uh, in, in the CWD core area, uh, the DNR has enacted the, the uh, you can shoot two bucks of any size. There's no APR on either tag. And this was the third year of that. And we, you know, you guys, you guys know, I mean, we, we shot some pretty nice bucks in for Nuevo County in the past. Um, you know, we were consistently harvesting 120s and 130s. Uh, we were always had, and for Nuevo, that's, you know, that's a great buck. Uh, we always had, you know, some bigger ones that we were, you know, playing cat and mouse with. <laughs> and, uh, but since they've enacted that, that, you know, two buck of any size limit in 10 toe tags per hunter, our hunting has just been, um, it's been very, very difficult and very, very frustrating. And, um, but we did have a couple of decent bucks running around. Uh, my son was able to harvest two, you know, pretty nice eight points with his bow. Um, and we were during, basically it was, I hadn't seen a shooter or had a shooter on camera the entire month of October. Um, so we, we started kind of talking amongst our, our, you know, our guys and we were like, well, 
we can't continue to just go out night after night, you know, weekend after weekend with nothing to hunt. Like, there's literally not, you know, a buck that we had, you know, that we could hunt. Right, exactly. So we started looking at a couple of our bucks that we did have, and we, we and this was a buck that I had passed twice during during uh, bow season. It's a, you know, a small, we get quite a few small three-year-olds, um, like they, they're late born spike horn, or, you know, they their first year is a small spike, uh, maybe a, you know, a big, a big four or six point as a two-year-old, and then a small, you know, a smaller eight point at three. Um, and it takes them a minute to catch up. And uh, especially now that we can't, you know, that we're because we used to run, you know, supplemental feed through our, you know, through our our feeders. We had, you know, feed program, a supplemental feed program plus our food plot program. So, um, so it takes a minute for them to catch up. So we we had this three year old eight point that was a, you know, relatively regular customer. So we decided as a group we're going to take him off the do not shoot list and. You know, we'll we'll at least we have something that we can go out and hunt. Right. Everybody was in agreement, and so that night I went out, climbed in my Slayer blind over my food plot, and the second weekend of gun season, that buck walked in in broad daylight, like he owned the place, and I shot him. <laughs> <laughs> Just that easy. <laughs> and, and so then I texted my buddy, and I said, "Well, <laughs> he's dead. Now what do we do? Now what do we hunt?" <laughs> right. <laughs> So, and it, you know, it was, it was a nice eight point. It was, you know, it's a three year old and that was, you know, that's our target. But I mean, it, it just, it just was, it was, it was one of those things. And, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna downplay the buck because, uh, you know, he deserves to be, you know, celebrated just like any other buck. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and I, I, it's, like I said, we, we made a decision as a group um, and I just happened to be the one that he came into, you know, that night. And so, um, so it's beautiful eight point, you know, I mean, again, it, it's, I, I don't even, I don't even know what it scored. I don't even care what it scored. I, you know, it's a three year old. So yep, exactly. It, it fit your parameters and you guys decided as a group that that one would yep. go and you just yep. happened to walk in front of you in broad daylight. That was a mistake. Yep. <laughs> yep, exactly. So, so then, you know, and then I, I, we proceeded to, I shot a doe the next day and then, um, uh, prior to that, um, my Illinois, I, I was on my Illinois lease, um, you know, that first week in November. Um, which you, you there. which you weren't flooded out this year. No, we weren't. It's the first year. Well, it's it's the first year. Excuse me. It's the second year out of five years that it did not flood. You've had some. <laughs> so, you, you've had some pretty good camera pics of floods from that property. Oh, yeah, I've got a lot of pictures of wood ducks floating floating past the camera. So, but um. So anyway, so you know, we made the trip down to Illinois and hunted the lease down there. We we were it was it was it was probably the warmest week of hunting that I've been ever hunted in in November. Yeah. And it was yeah, it was it was it was, you know, in the 80s during the day. It was cooler in the morning. Um but we're right on the Mississippi River, and so about midweek, 7 days in, I think, my buddy says, "Hey, I think we need to get in tight to the river like with this heat you know he said i could feel like a cool breeze coming off the river and i think we just need to move in tight so i said well why don't you go ahead and you know we'll slide your stand in closer it's only like a 75 yard move and i said let's just you know you sit down there and on that ridge and see what happens so i'll be darned that night one of our big shooters that we'd been getting on camera was 157 inch 10 point um giant body deer comes strolling past whack smokes it um gorgeous gorgeous buck long tines and you know 157 inches so um and by my standards that's a giant (laughs) right 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 (laughs) so so anyway so the next day he says well why don't you why don't you uh you know literally let's just go sit in that tree um you know see what happens i'm like all right so so i went and climbed up in that tree and it's funny because it's a floodplain, and so there's a refrigerator right behind me. Yes, a refrigerator. <laughs> so, I was waiting for the joke there, but no, it is a refrigerator. <laughs> no, it's it's a refrigerator. So this buck, this this one of our, you know, it was beautiful ten point that we've been getting on camera. I I see him coming. He's chasing the doe. He's grunting the whole way. It's just that perfect, you know, that that perfect rut hunt situation. He's coming down through the, you know, through the thicket. The doe was trying to get, you know, trying to lose him in the thick brush. 
and he's just glued to her. So finally she comes, she comes slither. I know she's going to come right by me. She walks right past the refrigerator and, um, I use a crossbow. And so the buck and it was behind me. So I'm standing up in the stand backwards and I got my, you know, I've got the, the, I'm watching them come and I'm just making sure that my, my limb is clear of the tree and, you know, checked it, checked it, checked it. Well, then he comes strolling by and I grunted him at 15 yards and stopped him. Well, in the process of him stopping, he took like one more full stride. And so my, I, I moved about another inch and I touched it off and the bow about flew out of my hands and the limb hit the tree and of course my arrow landed at his feet and so obviously i was pretty distraught like i'm like that's a rookie move right there what in the world i mean what what just happened i can't believe it and uh so anyway so i'm 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 upset you know this this was on my this was i think this was nine this that was on day eight of hunting very very hard for eight days straight uh, we were doing, we were pulling midday sits. We were, you know, long morning sits, midday sits, evening sit. You know, I mean, we hunted hard. And uh, so then the next morning, I, I'm, I said, I'm going back to the well. I got to go back to the well. So I, I slide back in that tree stand. I get in there, I get in there, you know, early. And I'm sitting there. And all of a sudden, I hear that same grunting coming right down through that same thicket. And I had put out some, uh, um, some VS1 you know, Conquest VS1. Right. And that buck made it past me, behind me. I could not get a shot. And it went up to a little area. Uh, it's like a sandy beach area. Went down to the Mississippi River and took a drink. <laughs> and he started wind checking. And I, I am I am very confident he smelled that VS1 because he came back around. And then he went back up into that thicket. And he, you could see him looking for it. And he came right back down that same runway that that Doan buck came down the night before. Only this time, I waited till he got on the other side of the tree, <laughs> <laughs> and I grunted him and stopped him and, and smoked him. And at, I mean, he was like 15 paces, and he ran up to the to the ridge and stopped and went in behind some trees. And I I, I was pretty sure he went down, but I didn't I didn't know for sure. And uh, so anyway, after giving him some time, I went down there, and it was a 100. And it was a 12. It was a 12 point that we had get, been getting on camera. And, uh, I mean, I knew it was, I knew it was a really nice buck. I just didn't know for sure what it was. And, um, so it was, it ended up being 146 inch 12 point. So mainframe 12, clean 12, um, which you just, you don't see very many of anymore. And so I was, I was elated with that buck, obviously. Right. And, exactly. And you used the cart, cart to get it out because it was a big yep, deer. Yep. Yeah. It was a huge deer. We got, and I, I, people, I, I keep telling people if you're a meat hunter, you're not doing yourself a service by shooting younger deer because we ended up getting 92 pounds of boned meat off that deer. That's a, pure that, venison. That's a, that's some good meat. Is that what that refrigerator was for behind you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, if he would have been a, if he would have been a nice deer, he would have chopped himself up and put himself in that refrigerator right. for you. Right. He would have jumped in there. It's funny because I have a picture of my Luminoc right next to that refrigerator from the night before <laughs> <laughs> i took a picture of it sticking in the ground right next to the the fridge and i'm like that's is, something you just don't see <laughs> is no. that the weirdest thing that you've seen float floating through that floodplain down there oh no we've refrigerators um uh you know the the propane tanks the 300 pound propane tanks yeah we see those we've got boats there's there's literally boats that are just covered with mud. Um, wow! I mean, you get you it all. It. Yeah, and it's different every year. You get new stuff in, new stuff out when it floods. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, sure. it's a pretty interesting little lease to hunt. So. Right? Awesome. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, we're coming up on our first break. How about we uh, step outside and we come back? Let's talk a little Packer Max. All right. All right. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at pseartery.com.
Welcome back. Second segment of the show, talking to Lincoln Rowan of Packer Max. We've been to Illinois. We've done some hunting in Michigan. We've talked about a floating refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So, so uh, you, you know, it's getting to be about that time. Uh, we're coming out of hunting season. We're starting the new year. It's it's it's, it's blowing snow outside, and it's it's going to be cold, beyond cold. And but it's not too early to start thinking about spring and what you're thinking about spring food plots or what you're thinking about doing to your property. And um, right. you know, like you said, one of the, the one of the big steps is uh, call to packing your food plot and making sure you follow the steps. Obviously, the first step you got to do is make sure what your soil content is. Is get a soil mm-hmm. check and, and make sure what you're doing. You're not yep. doing for frivolous reasons of just throwing seed out just to throw feed, it out, feed everything else, right? So, right, to feed uh, the birds. Right, exactly. So, you know, yeah, you get your soil checked. You find out what kind of lime and everything um, or whatever fertilizers you got to add per whatever recommendations. That, that great. Uh, I know I've sent mine to Biologic, and they're pretty mm-hmm. quick about it. So, yep. uh, Packer Max, talk to us about that. What you guys got in the hopper for the upcoming year? What's going on? <laughs> Oh man! Well, it, we we started, you know, right out of the gate. Um, it's just going like grand gangbusters. It's um, we're we're you know and we're behind already, and you know, feverishly working to get caught up so that we can maybe try to get ahead. But uh, we just did not anticipate this kind of response this early, um, and so uh, you know, we're just we're really you know we're really focused in on trying to get get caught up and then and then start to get you know it's you know it's ahead so um but you know we've we've been working on a new product um you know last year we we launched the wheel kit for the heavy duty unit and um you know this year i i probably the biggest thing that i've seen in the in the food plot industry that people want and that they're going to is this no-till process and okay so, Jeff Sturgis has a couple of different, you know, a couple of different um, ways of doing it with buckwheat, where you, you know, you plant the buckwheat, you let it grow, you seed into it, and then you crush it with the Packer Max, um, you know, and then that actually acts as, as like a like a mat or like a kind of like a you know a, a protection for the seed. Okay. So you're not tilling your soil, and um, it's the same principle as throwing down hay on your yard when you plant your yard. Right, you, except um, you're just using the natural that's in your field. Yep, yep. And then, and then as that buckwheat breaks down, that then returns organic matter into your soil. And so, plus you're not stirring up that weed bank. Um, so that's one way of doing it. <clears throat> so you, you grow your, you know, you grow your your buckwheat, you seed into it, you crush it. And then uh, Jeff sprays it also with Roundup just to kill because you can spray Roundup, you know, it doesn't hurt your seeds. And then that just, you know, puts a final kill on everything. So he kind of uses a, he kind of uses a natural, almost almost a natural with it. Besides, with obviously Roundup, but using the mm-hmm. natural growth and then going in, matting it down, then yep. killing it, and then it, it becomes it almost becomes like you said that 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 hay or straw that you're actually mm-hmm. putting down. Right. Yeah, and then it, and then the compost and you know turns into uh, organic material and feeds your soil. So it also helps to to uh, you know keep the moisture. If you know if your if your if your soil isn't exposed to direct sunlight, it's not going to dry out near as quickly. And so by having that you know, mat of buckwheat, it it you know holds that moisture and keeps uh, the soil temps from you know from skyrocketing in direct sunlight. So. And, and you still get incredible growth through that, you know, through that mat of buckwheat. And it really works well. So a lot of guys have also gone to Grant Woods has that buffalo system where they grow uh, rye, mm-hmm. cereal rye. And then they'll do that same thing. They'll seed into that cereal rye and then they'll crimp it. Okay. Well, we had a lot of people asking for a, a more economical, affordable, smaller uh, crimper because everything that's out there is a big five thousand dollar crimper that you know is monster piece of equipment that goes behind a big tractor and obviously guys like you know like us that are only doing you know a few uh, you know a few acres don't need that huge piece of equipment we nor do we have the big tractor and the you know um like my 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 john deere is 20 horse john deere four-wheel drive tractor you know right it's, and, not, it's not the big guy right and so um, we couldn't get around in a lot of our food plots with a bigger tractor. So, so a lot of guys were asking for a, a more economical, smaller version crimper. So 
it, we started developing, you know, this kind of been, this has been in our thought process for a little bit, you know, a little bit of time. How can we do this? And so I said, well, you know, that wheel kit bracket, why couldn't we do the same principle with that and then just build a crimper cage? So we started developing that, and we just, uh, this week, as a matter of fact, picked up our very first prototype of the crimper cage. And we got it mounted up, and we have to make one slight adjustment. We have to have new side brackets cut. We have to extend them up a half of an inch because it was hitting on the drum. But Mm -hmm. other than that, it it is really cool looking. And um, so what it happens is you the, the crimper cage mounts above the drum, and then you literally flip it over, and so the drum is above the crimper cage, so you have all that weight on this cage, and you pull it, and then you crimp that rye, see the rye heads over, and then that terminates the rye. And then, again, you have all that organic material breaking down, and then you have your, you know, your, your, your food plot grows up through that, you know, through that mat of rye stem. Well, and it seems like a lot of guys so, are going to similar things like that where, where they're trying to turn that organic matter back into the soil. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yep. then it, it puts nutrients in the, back in the soil, but also it yep. helps to hold uh, moisture as well, yep. you yep. know, especially when you've got a dry summer. Yeah, exactly. And so Grant Woods does, it's a pretty cool little demonstration that he does. He has a spot of bare dirt, and he takes one of those laser uh, temperature, you know, uh, oh, yeah. digital. Yep. So he it's in and i and don't hold me to the numbers i can't remember exactly what it was but on blair bare black dirt and direct sunlight it was like a hundred and some change degrees like 120 degrees okay so then he go he goes to the mat area where he's got the you know the rice uh stems crimped over he pulls it apart and it's like 30 degrees uh, cooler mm-hmm. underneath the mat and so so, so you're I not mean, baking just, your seeds Right, you're not baking the soil, and and it's it's actually you know it's actually conserving that moisture. It's protecting you know the the new the new seed growth, and it's it's um, it's basically like putting a quarter of an inch of soil over your seeds for for all practical purposes. And then you're actually as that stuff is breaking down, you're you're literally feeding your soil, so uh, in your plants. And so so the crimper. The, the prototype is done. We have to now, of course, we get the prototype and we were looking forward to doing some testing, but it's probably not going to work so great in, you know, 12 inches of snow. <laughs> <laughs> no. So so we're going to have to push the pause button on the testing. But as soon as I get the new brackets done, you know, and then and we can at least kind of get a handle on, on how everything is going to hold up. And, you know, we'll be able to fill, fill the, you know, the drum with water and just make sure that everything, you know, is going to be able to support you know, 350 pounds of water. Well, maybe you can um, take and, and put like so, a snowblower and have it feed up into the drum and then have some kind of heater in it and it melts it and there you get your water. Yeah, <laughs> melts it as, it as it goes. Right? So so, so there so you go. We're, we're, we're super excited about that, though, because that's, like I said, that's something that so many people have been asking for. Um, it's become very, very popular, uh, especially for guys that don't have the big equipment. And, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, 90% of your I'm say 85 percent of your food plotters are probably going to go out and disc till you know whatever the case may be plant and then call to pack with a packer max but uh there is this you know there is a certain um you know there's certain guys that want to do the no-till process and it, it makes a lot of sense um and it's you know it's so good for your for your soil and you know you're it's just it's just a preference thing, but a lot of well, guys are going to that. And exactly. So, you know, we listened and, and, you know, we started developing this thing and, and hopefully, you know, after the testing is complete, we're going to be able to launch it, you know, sometime in, in probably April. So, well, you know, and a lot of guys too, that, that maybe have to hire it out. Um, mm-hmm. I know there's, there's some club land up by where we hunt and yep. a lot of guys have it done. Well, it costs yep. money per acre to drive somebody else's tractor and that costs mm-hmm. time. You know, it's, it's all about money. Well, if you're doing yep. the, the if you're doing the tilling and then you're going back and you're having to plant it and then and cult pack it and, and all those, you know, if you, right. you know, the guys that can do it with something similar to that, what you're talking about or a no-till, yep. they're saving yep. some money. Exactly. Yeah. And, and also yeah. it also depends on, you know, where these people are going, right? They might not have right. the proximity of their property right around a couple hours away that they get there often enough where they, right. they're going to do it in one weekend or, or whatever they're there. So they have right. to manage Maximize their the time. time, right? So, yeah. in, in, you know, so you will have the adapter for the Packer Max this spring, you're thinking? 
We're yeah, assuming assuming everything goes as planned, we should have it you know, released in the spring, and it's gonna it's gonna be uh, you know, and that's the cool part too is if you have a quad runner and you have a Packer Max or just a Packer Max and a and a sprayer, you can make some really sweet food plots. And if you add this crimper, you know, you just bring it up to another even another level. So you don't need you just don't need tons of equipment. I mean, you just don't and. Um, so that you know that that in itself is is huge. And, right, exactly. Uh, well, that's the whole part, right? Especially so, with Packer Max, you got a, a product out there. Mm-hmm. The 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 one Packer Max when it's empty, I think it was fifty five pounds to carry it. Is, yeah, the one you guys have, the standard is is, is, is sixty five pounds empty. Empty, so and you, you throw that over your shoulder and and, and yep. carry it wherever you need to. If not, like yep. I got it, I hook it up to my four wheeler up in the UP, mm-hmm. and it, mm-hmm. it's that easy. And then we can load it with water at the cabin. And yep. then when we're done, it's like, all right, just unload it with, with the water. But, yeah, the, it makes mm-hmm. the ease of the Packer Max so much more. And yep. it becomes multi-pur- multi-purpose. Yep. And I've used yeah, it. Yeah, there's a little. I've used to actually use it on our trail to, to, to push down the middle of the trail as yep. going down our trail. I filled it up and just go up and down the trail. Yep. Like you yeah, said, a lot of guys, uh, a lot of guys do that. Exactly. We do too. So, hey, you know, it's it's a multi-purpose unit that you can you spend the the money you need to, and it lasts. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the, these we have so many people. You know, my my personal unit is ten years old, and we do eleven food plots every year with it. Um, you know, ranging from four acres down to you know half of an acre. And it still has the original bushings in it, you know. Um, so, I mean, it's not a, it, it, and, they're, and they're not super expensive. And so it's not a piece of equipment that you're going to buy and have to replace. You know, I, obviously, you know, if, you, if you're if you ripping down a two-track and hit a piece of re-rod or something, you know, these, they're not bulletproof, but they're incredibly durable. So under normal use conditions, you know, these things are going to last you a very long time. And so it's it's a good investment. It's it's a, it's a long term investment, and if you did happen to bend a say bent your arm on you guys' unit, you know twenty five bucks, I send you another one, you know, um, and you know it takes you six minutes to replace it. So, um, and the Tw- benefits twenty five you know, bucks, I might bend Danny's arm for that. Wait a minute, might <laughs> <laughs> be worth it. <laughs> Time out here. How am I right. getting hurt out of the deal? Uh. <laughs> You know, so it's just, it's guys spend so much time and energy and money on food plotting and then maybe don't quite get the results that they, you know, they think they should, but they're dragging it with a fence drag or something. Right. You know, cultipacking is, there's a reason farmers have been doing this for generations. And there's a reason why farmers won't sell you their coulter packer out of their, out of their, you know, fence row. Mm-hmm. Um, they, you know, because they work. And this, this is geared towards the food plotter, small hobby farmer. You know, um, it's, it's, it's designed for guys with multiple properties too, that, you know, need to transport it. Um, it just, it's just a, it's just a really solid piece of equipment and it just, it, 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 it kicks your food plot program to the next level, you know. Right. Um, well, see, that's the whole part of it. It's so, all part of the process, starting mm-hmm. with checking your soil to yep. to, to the final. There, if you do the right steps, you're going to end up with those pictures that you see, and you've taken these pictures of mm-hmm. those luscious green fields that yep. are looking great. And then when a nice eight point buck comes walking out and he's on the hit right. list he gets nailed right right and then you smoke him right exactly <laughs> so, so how about we step a, out and we'll come back and we'll keep talking some pack max i want to ask you the difference between the unit we have and like the hd models and what other models you do have okay all right Sounds we're gonna step good. outside we'll be right back after this pse archery has always dominated the speed category now the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back, third segment of the show. You know, before we go any further, I want to give a big shout out. Uh, something that we've been working on um, in the state of Michigan, and we're finally on uh, 
a local radio station up in the UP, an internet radio station up in the UP, M one twenty three FM. Whoa. That's right. Nice. So nice. yeah, so we're uh, Newberry, right? Yep, up in Newberry. So we are now officially on their station up there. I, I've checked and they shared the show tonight. So Lincoln Roan, you are talking to the Eastern UP. The UP. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's Absolutely. right. Congrats, you guys. Thanks. So, Very cool. you know, we're talking about the unit we have. You've also got some other models. You've got four footers. Mm-hmm. You've got eight footers. You've got things that, depending on, like, you talked about the size of tractor, you, you yep. can accommodate that. Like, you've got an HD model. Now, what's that? Sure. So, yeah, we have five different models. We have the, the standard unit, which is the one you guys have. It's just the, the, uh, the tubular frame. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, like a lot of guys ask me what my opinion is on whether they should get the standard or the HD look, it kind of depends on your situation. If you're doing field edges and you're only, you know, some, if you're only doing, you know, one or two acres of plots, uh, and it's relatively open terrain, that, that unit is probably going to serve you just fine for a very long time. And if you're careful with it, you know, you can go through the woods with it and stuff. I mean, it's, it's a tubular frame. So, you know, uh, you it, it can bend and so so that's the, that's the standard unit and we we move up to the gamekeeper the hd gamekeeper series and that has a three eighths inch steel frame and i kind of call that one the sherman tank series because you know you can you can hit it you can literally center punch a tree with the arm of it and it just walks around it, it mm-hmm. you know and and so if you bend that one you've really done something <laughs> so <laughs> now don't go out and try it folks if you have right, one don't yeah. go out and purposely try it just so you can prove lincoln wrong right right so you know so that's that's the heavy duty four footer that's probably our that ball that is our most uh popular unit you can add a wheel kit to that you know the flip over wheel kit um so you can transport it to your to your you know to your food plots on the wheels instead of on mm-hmm. the drone um and then that's also uh you you can add the wheel kit to any existing HD that's out there. So if you already had an HD, you can add that wheel kit. Um, and then you know that's also the same unit that you can that you can use the uh, the crimper on. So and then okay. again, that's going to be retrofitable. So if you have a four foot HD already, you can add the crimper to it. So that's going to be a huge advantage of that too. So, and then we move into the, the three point hitch models. Um, well, actually we have an eight foot pull behind model also. Um, and then we have a three point hitch. We have a four foot three point hitch and an eight foot three point hitch model. So pretty much any, you know, any, any type of scenario you are in, we've got, you know, we've got a call to packer that will, that will fit your needs. So, um, but yeah, you know, it, in, in, and again, it's it's not the I don't want to I don't want to make your you know everybody's I don't want to say you know hey man you buy this thing and your food plot program is going to be fantastic you still have to go through the steps you well, still have okay, to put the work in you all know, you're doing right. is you're providing a tool for the tool shed we've had yep. these conversations a million times yep. and yep. it goes right back to step one when you check your soil because if you don't do that yep. right you might as well just take right. all the tools in the shed right. and just throw them out because it's not going to work. Right. So. I had a I had an old farmer tell me one time. This is my early in my food plotting uh, career. If you don't lime, don't bother. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, and it, it, at the least you can do is throw lime down. I mean, right. And it's and, and he, he he even says he would he would prefer you lime over fertilizing because all soil has some sort of nutrients in it. If it's growing weeds, it's got nutrients in it. Mm-hmm. So if your pH isn't correct and you can't release those nutrients to the plant, then, you know, it's useless. So by liming, you're unlocking that nutrients for the plant to be able to uptake it. So, um, but, you know, if, if you do, if you go through the steps and Mother Nature cooperates and you get a little bit of rain, uh, you know, the germination rates are incredible with these units. I get so many pictures of, of customers that plant, you know, on one weekend and then they go check it seven days later after one rain and they've got a beautiful, you know, uh, you know, beautiful green start to a, a food plot. And then, you know, a week later they go back there and it looks like carpet, you know, mm-hmm. and the germination rates are just, you know, incredible. And that even, even getting that up and going and growing, you, you know, you provide a, it's a, it's a better performing food plot. Um, you're going to, you know, I always say he with the most groceries wins. And if you don't have groceries, you, you got to have groceries. <laughs> right. So, e- exactly. You know? And so, uh, and if you're going to go through, if you're going to go through the process, 
you might as well carry it through the end. And the very last step is running the call, to, you know, running your field over the call to Packer. It's the last step of the whole process, and it's likely one of the most important. So Right, exactly. So, you know, so, besides being important, um, you're also in the real estate business. And mm-hmm. uh, well, why don't you give a shout out to, to your real estate and what you're doing and how, how's that all going? I know it's probably slow because it's February in well, Michigan. Yeah, well, it's, it's so I started this a uh, little over a year ago. Uh, we got my real estate license and I went to work with Chad Thielen with uh, Stony Creek Properties. We have such, and then I sold my very first property. We closed on a Friday and then Monday, the uh, state of Michigan shut us down and we couldn't do any real estate for months. Months and months and months. Couldn't show properties, couldn't do nothing. Couldn't get title work done. So that kind of pushed the pause button on that. Well, then in the process, Packer Max was going absolutely crazy. And so I really kind of, you know, veered kind of my, my you know, my, my focus to back to Packer Max. Well, um, things have started to progress again. Now we bought a, a, a franchise with um, United Country Realtree, United Country Real Estate. And uh, our official name is United Country Real Estate Lake States Realty in auction. And so we can, you know, we specialize in, in uh, recreational properties, hunting properties, uh, you know, lake properties, cabins. Um, I just sold an a 80 acre piece right here, not far from my home, as a matter of fact. Uh, we just closed on it last Friday. Um, the real estate market is hot right now, it is on fire. Um, I just sold my personal home. Uh, yeah, we're we're actually did you sell it? Off of, yeah, in less than eighteen hours. Wow, I remember. I wow. remember seeing the yep. post. You were saying goodbye. I yep. wondered how long it would take. Yep. Eighteen hours, yep. not not too yep. shabby. Eighteen hours, and we got a full price offer. So, um, so yeah, so that you know, that's a whole other chapter been going on. But um, you know, so I sold this other piece in Gowan here, and um, now I just I just ran up to Bear Lake. Uh, this is going to be a pretty cool property. It's forty acres. Uh, up in Bear Lake, which is in the APR zone, it has um, it has a fifth wheel on it with a it's I, it's a really nice aluminum structure roof over the fifth wheel. Okay, yep. And, and, I mean, it's really nice. It's not like you know, it's it's very very nice. And they've got a storage. You know those uh, the shipping containers. They got a big shipping container there for a storage unit. Um, you know, it's got it's got electric. You know, it's got a well. Um, you know, so it's it's a really neat, and it's it's got some really nice food plots already set up on it, but it's the whole front of it is kind of more open, so it's a habitat guru's like dream property because you could you know, you're pretty much starting with a blank canvas, and you could really start getting after it and doing some you know some really neat habitat improvements on this property, and you know start steering deer and you know um, it's it's pretty cool. So that'll be that'll be getting listed. I think. Uh, I just went up and got pictures and everything and kind of the walk through um, this past weekend. And uh, we're probably going to try to get that on the market here in the next, in the next week or so. So are, are you seeing more, uh, more activity on this recreational land now with COVID people trying to get out of the city and have their own little piece of whatever. Yeah. You can't, yeah. You can't find listings right now because I mean, everything, I mean, it's just, they're selling. If you do get a listing, it's sold immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then yeah, everybody's they're just snapping them up, and or they're or they're keeping them. You know, there's people that were thinking about selling are now mm-hmm. keeping them because they want to have the place to go, um, just even, in case. <laughs> I, I, I'm, Not to go there, but just in case. Right, the bug out property. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I always tell my kids, they think, you know, oh, dad, whatever. I'm like, you guys know the contingency plan. That's right. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you if know the escape plan. For whatever reason, yeah. you know where I'm going to be. And I expect you guys to, you know, follow bring suit. whatever you can and follow, you know, and get up there. So. Well, hey, e- even in your home, you've got a fire escape plan. You know, come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. Everybody, everybody's got a plan. Meet in the front yard. <laughs> Yep. You know exactly. that is awesome. You know it's good to hear. Well, people are are, are staying at home, so they've got things mm-hmm. on their mind. So it's mm-hmm. like, hey, let's go look at properties, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. Well, I, I think that's kind of part of the part of the, the uptick in you know, uh, even in, in hunting sales this year. You know, the department's going to pat themselves on the back, but um, you know, uh, hunting license sales over the whole nation were up. Um, you know, people aren't. You know, they're not going out for dinner. They're not going out to movies. They're not going to baseball games. They're not going to football games. You know, um, they're not traveling as much. Uh, I Chad Chad Brummel, he's a good friend of mine. 
uh, used to help with the, the LG LG page uh, is in, I forget where he's in. He's in C- Cancun or something. And they literally, the whole beach is to the, to, you know, they have the whole beach to themselves. And so people are just not spending that, that, you know, that money in those areas. So they're focusing the money in other areas, whether it be real estate, Packer Max, property improvements, you know, whatever. And um, so it's been, it's, I mean, I feel really bad in a way because like there's so many businesses that are struggling epically through this and Packer Max has just been on fire and, um, you know, I'm very blessed in that. Region. So um, it's a good problem you know, to have. And, you know, yeah, you know what I mean. We've we've you know we've done a good job getting it out there and stuff. But I mean, it's I have no doubt that, that you know, we had uh, some of our success last year and starting this year is is you know a direct result of that. So, but well, that's cool. That you know it's it's good to hear you're you're continuing to go. Like you said, through through this last few months, it's almost going to be a one year that I've been totally out of the office here in March. That I mm-hmm. and I'm not due back to go back. To after July, so seems yeah. impossible. Uh, it, it does, right? So yeah, I, it is. It is just mind-boggling. I had, uh, yeah. I mean, there's. It, it's it's just a whole. You know, it's a whole different than uh, environment than, than what we are accustomed to. So, question but, question for you on your uh, mm-hmm. Packer Max uh, mm-hmm. method of payment. What do you have available for that? So, um, if you go to the website, uh, we take all credit cards. Um, and then, you know, PayPal is also an option. Um, but yeah, any, any credit card payment, you can process it right through the website. Um, you can call me, um, in order via, you know, over the phone, you can stop and pick up at the shop. Um, you know, there's, if you're in the area, we're going to have, uh, we are going to carry uh, Northwoods, uh, Whitetails food plot seed this year. Um, just talked to John Comp today, as a matter of fact, and we're getting that lined up. So, we're going to have basically a full line of Northwoods you know, food plot seed at the shop. We're not going to we're not going to ship any of the of the seed. Um, it's going to be for you know for pickup people local, or if you're going through you know through Grand Rapids, you can stop at the shop. You know we have solo spreaders, we have habitat hooks. Um, you know we've got a, a some keys, and it's kind of neat because I I've used everything. I've used it all. Like I've tried everything, and so I'm keying in on stuff that I know works. And so well, even right there, you know, what better way to the, sell a product than the person who's selling it uses it, right? Right, it, right. It, you, and you, you know, it, it works out so, best yeah. that way. So, yep. all right. So, yep. so Ron Moses, give him a shout. Get with him. He can talk mm-hmm. how you ever want to deal, and uh, you can figure out something yep. to do. Yep. With that. And we can ship them. We can ship them. We ship them all over the country. And I mean, literally we, today, we shipped one to South Texas, and I shipped one to Minnesota. And we, I think we ended up shipping like eight or 10 today and they went, they literally fanned out over the whole country. And so, you know, you get it. it if you got the HD, it's 10 to 15 minutes to put it together. It's super easy. Uh, the standard unit takes you 10 minutes. I mean, it's, it's six bolts and, um, you know, so, so I'll ship it right to your doorstep. It comes in two boxes and uh super easy to assemble right so. and it, it also you've got some uh dealers throughout the state of michigan mm-hmm. and wisconsin yep. that, uh, if you're in claire standish uh clear lake gaylord uh jo- jones lake ashland illinois wisconsin you can stop yep. in go to the website packermax.com go to the dealers page and yep. there might be one close to you you can go right there and check it out and touch it feel it and take care of it right there yeah, thank thanks for bringing that up because that's that is a, a, a we have we do have many dealers in Michigan. We've got one. Uh, we're starting a, a big release with a, a Wellsboro Equipment in Pennsylvania, Mansfield, Pennsylvania, um, and so there's a lot of people in that area that that will be able to you know. I think that's that's nice too. Uh, you know, you know we stand behind the product. If you get it and you don't like it, I don't want you to have it. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't. I don't want I want to take care of you uh, but it is nice to have something that you can physically touch and see uh, versus just seeing it on YouTube or something but and um, also you would I, so, could, I could not let the show go by without saying it would have been nice to see you at a public show so you could do that but it isn't happening not this year well we are we are uh, yeah all of the shows that we would normally do are canceled except for one and we will be uh, March fifth through the seventh, we'll be in Iowa. Yeah, Iowa. Iowa. Iowa doesn't is not the, in Michigan. 
right <laughs> at the Iowa Deer Classic, and I know Danny, you and I talked about right <laughs> road tripping it out there. You I road trip it, but I tell you what, it's it's fun, tempting because show. it's like I'm I'm that's, jonesing for a show because it's like yeah. I normally head to the West Side to go see you guys and all our West Side yep. folks, and yep. yeah, it ain't happening. So we'll yep. see, we'll see what happens, what goes on in this state. But I tell you what, yep. we're coming up on our last break. We're going to go to our last break because in the last segment, we're going to ask you some questions just to have some fun. Like we always do with our interviewees. All right, we're going to step outside. We'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back, last segment of the show. You know, before we get to the questions, I know Lincoln Roan had an exciting hunt, but it wasn't with deer. No, something to do with a cat. Uh, something to do with a cat. <laughs> I saw some pictures here I got. So, yep. so explain to the, the folks, the, the viewers, and the listeners how this all transpired, because all of a sudden you, you got a cat you're holding on to. <laughs> well, yeah, and everybody's used to see, you know, uh, see me holding deer, and I, and I, I, I mainly deer hunt. I don't hunt a lot of other species and and we've had over the last this so my family's owned this property in Nuego for over 40 years and um over the last 10 15 years we've been getting steadily more and more pictures of, of bobcat and we one in particular is just a giant female and she has a split on her left ear mm -hmm. and so she was pretty identifiable every time we get a trail camera picture where we kind of knew it was her and uh, so we actually trapped this one, but um, my buddy and I, you know, got into some traps and, and got kind of set up and um, started watching some YouTube videos on how to do it. And uh, Michigan, in that little New Angle County area, they have a, a, it's a 10 day season. Um, and so we went up and, and trapped and, and we were lucky enough to have that mature bobcat step in the trap and and it's funny though trying to get a cat to step in a circle this big on 40 <laughs> you know 160 acres <laughs> it's pretty challenging right right and, and so um so yeah we were we were just and again it's i we were just it was a blessing like i just like i i got emotional when i was doing the little video recap of it because you know we've had this property for 40 years and the, my dad is you know given up so much for us to have this property and you know or well my parents both my mom and dad, my dad and in the time that we spent up there as a family unit together with my sons, my, you know, my kids, you know, myself with my dad, you know, my relationship with my mom and dad is, is, is incredible. And a lot of it is to do with that cabin and the time that we spent there. And so when we, we decided that any, any, you know, if we've got one, a, a very nice cat, we were going to have it a life-size mount. And um, we were going to put it in the cabin for my dad. And so, um, you know, and then when, when we got this thing, it was just like, like I said, so many people have just been struggling epically. Like I, I you know, my, my, my buddy, my best friend, who's my hunting partner for 35 years, um, you know, his, his dad was just recently passed away, but he was struggling with cancer at the time. And I just lost a good friend of mine to COVID. And, um, you know, he's my age and he got COVID and died, you know, and, and so, right. It's, it's, this is all transpiring and, you know, so many people have, have been affected by this and I just keep getting these blessings thrown at me, you know, with, with the business and deer hunting this year. And, and then this cat to top it off, like this coveted trophy, you know, uh, it was, it was just incredible. It was so cool. And this cat is just an old warrior. Like her teeth are, her canines were wore right down. Her middle teeth were missing. Uh, so you she's know, been I, around I, a while. Yeah, and I and I, I so you can go to the DNR website. I haven't that my report isn't back yet. But once you check it in, the the age you you know they age it because you give them the skull and everything. Right. 
and so they'll be able to tell me, you know, pretty I, I, apparently pretty close how old it is. So I'm really curious to see how old it is. But so yeah, we're going to get a life size mount and put it at the cabin and uh, Doyle Wildlife Taxidermy right here in um, right here in Rockford is going to do it for me. And uh, he was he was gracious enough to reach out and say, hey man, he's number three in the world in in predator uh, mounts. And he said, please don't let somebody turn that thing into a cartoon character. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, you see so many cats that just look terrible. Don't look right. like cats. So, you know, so I, I, you know, talked to Mike and, and he, he, you know, did this, he skinned it so that I could go get it, get it checked in and, and uh, he's going to mount it for me. So that is awesome. Uh, when you get it back, cool. when you get it back, you'll have to share some pictures on Facebook and we'll grab them and we'll share them with our viewers and yeah. listeners. And uh, yeah. did he give you an estimate of how long it'll take to have the mount done? I, I don't know honestly. Okay. I, I I was I would imagine it'll be sometime you know next summer that that I should be the back. All right, cool. Yeah. So, when, when you took that into the DNR uh, and they took the skull to to age mm-hmm. it, do you get mm-hmm. that back? Because I I've heard from guys now that they are actually keeping no. the skulls. Yeah, they keep the skulls, and um, it kind of depends. Like I was kind of begging him to let me keep the skull. I'm like, can't you? pull the tooth or something mm-hmm. but it was frozen mm-hmm. and so you know because you got to leave the head intact so um or yeah the skull well, yeah the skull was still frozen because it was in with the cape mm-hmm. and so he said if, if it wasn't frozen he might be able to pull a tooth out and just give me the skull back but he's like you know we get we get all kinds of you know biological data off and whatever so uh he he would not um, give me the skull back. So you'd think there'd be a way that the DNR make that accessible that you could get that back. I mean, you know, we get bear skulls, and you know, one one would think, you know, and they just started recently doing well, that. I do believe. Yeah. So yeah, unfo- they did. I, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's it's a newer thing. So, but and I guess it's not like I said. It's not like if you if you get the guy on a good day and it's, he can pull the tooth out and get what he needs to get off of it, he might give it back to you. But yeah. Um, but you know, it is what it is. You exactly. Know, I, again, but I, you got the I cat. Just, you know, so you so got the cat. Cool. It'll be it'll be awesome. Look, it'll be an awesome look in the cabin. No doubt about yep. it. Yep. Absolutely, definitely. All right, yep. let's let, let's let's turn this last few minutes into some fun and give you some questions, which we <laughs> typically give you. You've already had these questions before, so we're gonna we're gonna give them <laughs> to you anyways. But uh, hopefully, uh, you know. We're gonna to start to keep the record of what these people tell us about their food, and we're gonna make right. a, we're gonna make a beeline somewhere and get some dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so right. you know, you've been to Ohio, you've been to Illinois, Saskatchewan. You well that not, not this year, not this year, but he's yeah, gonna be traveling. Get in this year, yeah. right? He's, you're gonna be traveling to Iowa, so yeah. obviously you're gonna be listening to that radio. Yeah. What are you gonna be listening to? <laughs> uh country music the whole way there you go and and and, and maybe i am a i am a bit of a 80s 80s rock and roll guy too there's nothing wrong with that at all there's there's one song that when it comes on it's on my i I run my ipod and my or my uh you know my truck runs off my off my iphone and when motley Crue, (laughs) wild side comes on it's so, cranked as loud as it will go. So all of a sudden, I your hair turns into big '80s hair band. Yeah. So yep, he's and, listening to Hair Nation, Ozzy's Boneyard. <laughs> I know exactly yeah. what your same stations I'm listening to, so I know exactly <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> so okay, you're you're, you're cranking. You're you're on your way to Iowa. You're cranking the Motley Crew. You're you're yep. getting that munchy thing. What kind of snacks are you gonna have in that truck on your way to Iowa? Oh man, uh, anything gluten free. I'm a I'm a I have a, a gluten allergy. It sucks. Um, but so my, my new go-to because they are gluten-free is Cheetos. I, I all of a sudden have found a, a, a love for Cheetos. I eat Cheetos like I shouldn't. Okay. Cheetos, <laughs> Cheetos, Cheetos popcorn, yeah. Cheetos crunchy. She's got orange puffs. fingers any, now. Any kind of Cheetos. Hot, <laughs> and, and whatever. By, puffs, and by, crunchies. And by the time he gets whatever. to Iowa, the steering wheel is going to be all orange. orange. Right, right. <laughs> right, right. I'm, you know, I, I love I love Donald Trump, but I'm gonna look like Donald Trump by the time I get there. I'll be orange, <laughs> right? Exactly. Good deal. Sorry, sorry, Donald. But... Hey, it is what it is, right? It's in the commercials, right? <laughs> right. So, um, you know, obviously, you you you've gotten some game on the table. You down out in the field. Uh, Mike and Dan are coming over for dinner, and you're gonna make us a, a, a dinner. But what is your gonna be your dinner that you're gonna make us wild game dinner? It can be anything. Okay, so so. My specialty, and you can ask 
Adam Kemmer. Yep. You guys, I think you guys know Adam. Oh, we know yes, Adam. My, oh, yeah. My, uh, my uh, guide from Saskatchewan, the, the outfitter, Chris Cook, um, those guys have, have shared in this. But I am, my specialty is um, tenderloins. And I, I, it's, I, I don't do anything spectacular. I, um, I, I get them out. I clean them up. I get them to room temperature. I use Montreal seasoning and uh, uh, pink Himalayan sea salt or uh, pink Himalayan salt. And I get a, a skillet, super hot. I sear it. Um, I do it. I mean, medium rare, rare, rare. And I slice those up. And I'm telling you, there is not a better meat on the planet. So freaking good. Everybody loves my 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 tenderloin. So you and, sear, you sear them at a high heat for a, a minute yep. aside. Ish? Just yep. Just and I I I my uncle taught me this, but I do all of my meat by feel. Okay. Yep. Yep. You, you just I just feel it, and you can just feel it when it's you know when it's starting to firm up a little bit. Um, and then man, I pull it, and like like I said, it's it's pretty rare. I mean, my my wife likes to eat the ends because they're the centers are pretty purple. <laughs> but, I'm, I'm, but I'm I'm here to tell you they they, they are fantastic. It, and it, it, it's a it's a um, it's a good meal. Oh man! And what I, with it? Know, what with it? Okay, we got we got this the tenderloin in front. Of, what are you gonna have? What kind of sides are we gonna have with it? Oh, and then we're gonna have some some baby baby red skin potatoes uh, roasted with some some herb seasoning on them, and probably some sautéed onions up in there. And some baby, you know, some portobello, baby portobello mushrooms sautéed up. See, and, guys, I'm uh, going to get something to eat, right? Exactly, <laughs> man. Oh, so good stuff. I'm look, I'm looking at all the ingredients right now. Looking over there, going, man. <laughs> and, hey, I had it, chips and cheese for dinner. <laughs> th- three inches of snow outside. What better way to, to end your Thursday night than have a right. have a meal, right? right. So, so you, know, you I, have. I tried real quick. I tried. I tried a recipe on a on a venison neck roast. And uh, I think I, I need to tweak it a little bit, but that neck roast was really, really, really good. Really, and just in a just in a crock pot. Okay, you slow cooked it. Okay. Yep, some onions and some and some and some uh, mushrooms and some beef, you know, beef beef broth or beef stock. And I slow cooked it for like eight hours, and it was it was really really good. And so a lot of people overlook that neck, and uh, but you know you can peel it apart kind of like a pulled pork situation, or you know put it on some mashed potatoes, whatever. It was it was good. So, That's what I anyway. did with my roast. I took it. I I, I took a stew seasoning, and I and I threw the beans and carrots and potatoes in, and just let it go all yep. day. And like you yep. said, it, garlic, it, right? It, ooh. It was good stuff. Okay, so you have filled up Mike and Dan, and we're going to sit by the fire, and you're going to tell us a story that comes to mind that you want to tell us that's going to be something in your mind from either way back or maybe it just happened. What, are you gonna, what story are you going to tell Mike and Dan? Oh, man. Probably one of the most memorable. Uh, it's probably going to be hunting, you know, a hunting story. Um, my most memorable story that that I – it's it's when I when I shot my buck in Saskatchewan, my second buck in Saskatchewan. Um, after six days sitting on stand in the middle of the Canadian wilderness, uh, 12, 13 hour days, um, playing cat and mouse with this big Canadian buck, um, you know, having it finally come to come to fruition and and having them having him step out to my left. I looked down. I was in a ladder stand. I looked down and he steps out at 15 steps. Were you cold? And huh? Were you cold? No. <laughs> I, go, I go early. I'm a sissy. I go early. Oh, okay, I go okay. O- I go in October. I okay. Go when, it's, when it's you know tolerable. This past year when I shot my buck, it was 13 degrees, and that's warm up there. Right. So, but uh, that that's probably going to be the story. All and, right, cool. You know, and we've seen pictures. Cool. We we uh we've seen that we've seen pictures of that buck, and you know what. Yep. I'm going to turn around after you tell me that story and after we've had a good night together. I'm going to turn around, look you dead in the eye, and congratulate you. All, All right. right. I'm going to congratulate you on your so many years of sobriety. Oh, yeah. You, yeah I know you, you. you've mentioned it thank you. several times, and I want to commend yeah. you beyond hmm. what anybody well, knows. Yeah, now you're going to get me choked up. No, I'm <laughs> getting I'm getting <laughs> choked up. and it, it, that it's, means the world. Exactly. Really and, and it, it really it, does. I, I commend I, I you. I literally... I literally wouldn't be sitting here talking to you guys right now had I not 
uh, been turned it around, at, turn it around. You know, right. You know, and you look 20 the, years, just, just so, or excuse me, 19 years. I just celebrated 19 years of sobriety. There you That's go, awesome. Man. Congratulations, and so, bud. Thank and, you. and you can look I, in the I, mirror every day and do I, that. I, you know, I take none of the credit. I give it all to the Lord because I couldn't, have, I, I, like I said, I wouldn't be sitting here. Well, he's a, he's a, he's a guiding factor in your life. And when you look in that mm-hmm. mirror, you got to answer to two people. One is him yep. and one is you. Yep. Yep. So M-O-1. you've done it. <laughs> True. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure uh, which order that goes. Right. Yeah, <laughs> right? right. Oh, but shoot. I want to. No, seriously, Danny, I appreciate that very much, man. I, I really do. It means a lot to me. And, it, you and, have uh, no that's... idea when I see you post that every year that I follow that, that it, it, yeah. uh, and I, we don't get to get together except either at a show or anything like that, or maybe if I stop yep. by. But definitely, yep. if we spent the night together, you'd get a, a big attaboy from me for that. Yeah, thanks, absolutely. Dude. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think Perfect. we're at the end of the show, and I wanted to end it on a, a great note. Absolutely. And, and I wanted to do that, and I've been thinking about that since we said we were going to have you on. Uh, so I just wanted to shout out to you. And but, Thank you. But everybody out there, um, you got to get over to Packer Max. Uh, Get your order in, because spring is actually going to be here before we know it. Oh, yeah, yeah, soon. we're 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 sixty, you know, forty five days out probably. You know, I mean, really. So yeah, okay. check you know check out our check out our our new building. You know, we're we're excited to be in there. It's nothing. It's not huge, uh, but it's very very nice. It's set up very nice, and you know we're very efficient out of there. And uh, um, you know we're going to have some pretty cool stuff there. Um, that that food plotters are going to be able to use and, and enjoy and grow some great groceries and and do a little habitat work and it'll be good excellent go. excellent so well, i tell you what man it's been a pleasure having you on uh for those of you on the podcast make sure you get over to his website and check out uh the packer max uh if you're in the area stop by the shop what have you or some yeah. of the dealers in the area that are near your home uh if yeah. you're listening to us on itunes make sure you go over to itunes and give us a review please that helps us and helps people like lincoln who helps us as well it just helps to spread the good word and don't forget yeah. to share us on social media share packer max's page on social your social media as well and uh, just get out there and uh hit it hard man get ready grow some groceries here this spring so and, yeah we're we're closing in so i yeah. want i want to thank you guys too for being such a great partner um you know and and just your show you know you bring a lot of uh, good information to a lot of people Thanks. and um i just you know i want to commend you guys too for bringing the outdoors to people and just keeping people engaged and um you know you guys are incredible likable people and um i just love hanging out at the cabin with you guys i really do and and uh i uh, thank you for that so, hey man so, we gotta do face to face here soon man this, yeah, this sure. staying home stuff is for getting sure. to be for the birds so yeah and then one last thing that i want to bring up too is um so we're gonna i'm gonna and i've been wanting to do this too um something i've been thinking about but we'd like to do a um uh a up north journal listeners discount on packer okay. max um, and the code you can order it on the website, um, or if you you know if you come to the shop, we'll just we'll just do the discount. But uh, it'll be a twenty five dollar discount off any model, and use uh, Up North Journal. So um, U N J twenty five. U N J twenty five. Yep, UNJ25. Yep. For a right. 25 discount for the discount code. Well, well, thanks, man. We yeah, appreciate it. We appreciate that, yeah. everybody out there. Uh, yeah. It was kind of nice. I, I was actually working my real job, and somebody hit me up <laughs> and they wanted to talk Packer Max. Mm-hmm. I'm like, cool. That, that, okay, I can have a meeting on this. This is good. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> so, absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll keep that out there. We'll get that out there to the folks and our listeners and uh, cool. get them over to you. All right, so for those of you on the podcast, that'll do it for us this week. Next week, we've got JPO. Next week, we've got JPO, Paul from JPO Game Calls. He's local right here in Linden, Michigan. He will be on the show with his wife, Amy. We're going to be talking spring turkey. All right. Ooh, nice. you got to love it. All right, so those of you on the podcast, that'll do it for us this week, folks. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Better the Hunt. Easy Cut. Packer Max. Buck Bates, Lim Walker Game Calls, Total Peep, Sunrise Archery, Scent Lock, Scent Blocker, Rebel Six Rub, and Season. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.